and we are going through exam questions these are basically from the tutorial sheet on phase equilibrium and the first question is saying soaps and detergents contain surfactant which is a surface active agent that disrupt the intermolecular forces in water to allow its spreadability what intermolecular forces are disrupted in water by surfactant now surfactant is there surfactant actually even in our lungs so you know anyway i'm doing medicine so i'm telling you this so that it can just help you with a bit medicine in our lungs at the end we have got what we call the alveoli the alveoli have got cells here we have got two types of cells the type one and the type two pneumocytes okay so the type two cells what they do is that they produce surfactant and what this surfactant does is to reduce surface tension its work is to reduce surface tension and why surface tension should re be reduced so surface tension really is just the force that is created okay if you have got a bowl of water like this you have got water here now the thing is that water can form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules and that is what is going to create surface tension and when you have got this surface tension it can actually make insects to be able to float on water because surface tension creates something like a thin layer creates a thin layer where insects can be able to step on and so the problem is that that can actually get to cause problems if it's in the lungs can cause the lungs to collapse like the lungs will be pulled okay and causing them to collapse now what surface tension is going to do really on the surface of a liquid what was surface tension is just because of cohesion okay one water molecule is attracted to another water molecule and cohesive forces are because of hydrogen bonds and this is what creates this thin layer for insects to be able to float so what will happen is that surfactant or reduce surface tension now it does that it as it basically gets to break down or to reduce those hydrogen bonds so that's the function of surfactant so what does surfactant do it disrupts hydrogen bonds okay surfactant disrupts hydrogen bonds when you disrupt these hydrogen bonds it means that you are going to be able to reduce the cohesive forces okay and once you reduce those cohesive forces it means that water will not be attracted to another water molecule and so water can be able to spread that is what allows for spreadability okay i hope that's okay so i'll just put here how we are saying that surfactant reduces surface tension but how it's by disrupting hydrogen bonds okay so that's what happens what intermolecular forces are disrupted now for water because in water you have got hydrogen bonds a compound that is polar what bonds do you think what intermole remember inter is bonds between molecules so what bonds do you think are, have been what intermolecular forces have been disrupted is the same hydrogen bonds these are the intermolecular forces that have been disrupted i hope that makes sense please if you have got a question feel free to ask if you are okay with what i've just said so far kindly just show me some reactions just react with any image on your screen okay thank you so much ruth thank you bright thank you so much guys all right so question number two the diagram below 
shows the effect of intermolecular forces on the boiling point of different molecules made from atoms in the same period and group on the periodic table. So we're talking about boiling point in the same group and period. Explain the observed trend in the boiling point of molecules from group 4 and 6 on the diagram. Okay, from group 4 and group 6 on the diagram. Now, in the exam, in the test, you are going to have your periodic table with you. But now you can see the trend that you, that is here. For example, you have got the same group and then we have got the same periods. Okay. We have got the same groups and then the same periods. Let's say, for example, this group here, this group. Groups move from up to down, isn't it? And then you have got the periods. So you are you're having running from left to right and then from up to down. Okay, from up to down. So when you look at these guys, why are they behaving like this? Why is it that they are decreasing as you go down? The boiling point is going like this. And then also as you get to move from left to right. Let's start with group six. In group six. Now in group six, what have we been given in group six? You can see you have got water. You have got H2, okay, you have got this one, H2S, you have got H2SE, you have got H2TE, okay. These guys are in group 6. So why is it that water has got the highest boiling point followed by H2S, followed by H2SE, and then followed by this one here? Now, all these guys that you can see in group 6, remember a group is from up to down. So, in other words, in groups, when you come on the periodic table, group 6, you, on top you are going to have oxygen, down you are going to have sulfur, and then you are going to have this SE, and then you have got the TE. Okay, so all these guys are actually polar. Things that, atom elements in group 6 are polar. So that's one thing. So the boiling point, what is going to influence the boiling point then? Okay, since we have said that these guys are polar, all of them. So it means that polarity is not really what will differentiate them. So what will really influence their boiling point is hydrogen bonds and also the dipole-dipole forces because molecules that are polar will form what we call dipole-to-dipole -dipole forces. We really did talk about where well, the intermolecular forces. For example, water itself. Water is a polar molecule. So if you write it like this, the oxygen is a bit negatively charged. It will be attracting hydrogen of another water molecule like that. Okay, these attractions, we call them, besides them being hydrogen bonds, we also have attraction because of being polar, which we call dipole, dipole. More uh, forces. Dipole just means that a molecule has got two poles, negative and positive. How oh, that makes sense, all right? So what happens really in this case? Uh, the trend. You can see water is a bit high, high, high up, and then the boiling point falls down, and then it starts to increase again. But the question should be: Why is it? Remember these guys. The way I've written them in group six. I want you to really understand this. We have we are basically just attaching hydrogen to them. So to this one we attach two hydrogens. So this one we attach two hydrogens. To this one we attach two hydrogens. To these ones we attach two hydrogens. Now why is it that the boiling point is small is actually increasing as you go down, right? It's increasing as you go down, as you can see. It is small for this one, but it's big for this one, and then it's bigger for this one. But we had a discontinuity. Oxygen, the boiling point is way, way higher. Because it was supposed to be that water was supposed to have the lowest boiling point. But that's not the case. Why? So what explains the anormality when it comes to water with the boiling point is the hydrogen bond. 
water forms extensively a lot of hydrogen bonds and hydrogen bonds are weak bonds but because there are so 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 many okay if you have got your partner you don't love that guy if he buys too many gifts you can end up liking him on on first august isn't it you can end up loving him very much and i just hope that will not be a London dispersion force, it will not be a weak bond because, well, anyway, we, we let it slide. But water forms a lot and a lot of hydrogen bonds. Because of those a lot of hydrogen bonds, it makes water to be special. To actually boiling point is the energy that you have to put in for you to convert something that is in a liquid into a gas. So the more the forces that someone has, the harder it is. Look at this. The more the love you have for the partner, the harder it is for another person to come and grab you from that partner. Okay? So the greater the force of attraction or the intermolecular forces within a molecule, the harder it is for you to convert it from one state of matter to another. So there are a lot of intermolecular forces in water, specifically the hydrogen bonds. And that is why it makes water to be so, so, so hard for it to be converted from one state to another. So because of that, you need a lot of energy. Well, the only way you take away my partner from me is you need to do much, 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 much more a lot for her to really consider that, okay, this one is doing much more. Otherwise, if you just come and do ordinarily, and even when you are doing even much more than me, for you to take away from me, you should have done much more. I'm just using an example. Don't, don't take it personal. Don't let anyone take you away from anyone. Okay, so that is what explains the high boiling point of water. It is very hard for you to convert liquid water to gaseous water, which is boiling, because you have got a lot of intermolecular forces in water. And specifically, the intermolecular forces we are talking about are the hydrogen bonds. But now, what explains now these other properties, the, these two other molecules? Because in that case, it's not about hydrogen bonds. Then what is explaining this uh, weird uh, trend? So what is explaining this weird trend? Be these guys, in as much as they are polar, remember every molecule has got what we call the London dispersion forces. Okay? So I'm saying hydrogen bond is responsible for the normal explanation in water but for the other property h2s has got less boiling point in comparison to h2se and this one has got less boiling point in comparison to h2te the explanation here is the london dispersion force and how is that hydrogen bonds are negligible when it comes to these molecules so it's not hydrogen bonds explaining but the london dispersion forces are actually increasing as you move from h2s to h2te okay the london dispersion forces are increasing and how is it that the london dispersion forces are increasing what explains that why is it london why is it that the London dispersion forces are increasing? London dispersion forces increase when a molecule has got a lot of hydro, uh, a lot of electrons. And as you move from left to right on the periodic, actually, as you move from up to down on the periodic table, the electrons actually get to increase. Why? Because the atom is becoming bigger. Okay, so as the atom is becoming bigger and bigger, the electrons are increasing. And when the electrons are increasing, we have got a term known as polarizability. So there is actually, the atom becomes more polarizable. In other words, you can easily distort the electron charge. I think there's a question where I'm going to explain more about polarizability.